cold yet. <laughs> Same. <laughs> it's freezing here at the uh, at the Country Muster uh, on the Webb Brothers uh, property, and uh, and it's nice to be back here because would you believe a little bit of little little bit of trivia for you right now. I was here for the first one in 1982. I heard. So there was the two boys, the two brothers, the, the Webb Brothers, and myself. I think the rest of them are all dead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they are, but anyway, <laughs> it's great to be back here again. Yeah, definitely. And it must be so much different compared to the first one? Well, in, see, in those days, uh, and we're talking long before, everybody knows what the Gibby Must is all about now, yeah. right? And which has now changed, when it's, it's done a 360 and changed into the Gibby Music Festival or some silly thing like that, whatever. Very yeah, very big. And, um, and, but when this, when this started, this was, God, what's going to happen? people turn up, we're way up in the middle of nowhere and uh, at the end of a dirt road and all of this sort of thing, and people turned up. And that was the start of the Gibby Muster as, as we know it today, and, uh, and sometimes you, you perform at the Gibby Muster you know, in front of 30,000 people now sometimes. That's, that's extraordinary, and to resurrect this here once again on the original site all these years, all these years later, and I think to myself, God... I'm still alive and rocking all over the world and great balls of fire and it's a, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, because oh, just the amount of people that have attended here over a few years and had just changed to a different site and stuff, it's just incredible how much difference it's made. Well, yeah, and times will move on too, too, Yasmin, because the country music uh, going back then was entirely different to the country music. I mean, right now it's, it's almost oh, rockabilly pop. I suppose is that a nice way to describe it? Yeah. And um, uh, you know, but going back then, and I suppose the attraction for myself in those days was the fact that I was performing on a television show called The Mike Walsh Show, and uh, and singing all the golden islands from Jim Reeves singing "Put Your Sweet Lips a Little Closer to the Phone" to a uh, white sports coat and a pink carnation to great balls of fire and a whole lot of shaking going on. So it was a combination of rock and roll and country music. Whereas everybody else on, on the bill just did country music. And, uh, you know, so I rock, rocked out there and jumped all over the piano and kicked the keys and did it, which we'll still do tonight. Oh, God, I hope the leg goes up and comes down. But anyway. <laughs> and, you know, they, 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 were the, they were the days because you've got to remember that what history uh, takes us back to. Carl Perkins and Elvis and Sherry Lee Lewis and Fats Domino and... And all, most of those people all came out of country music. And then they went into the newfangled, hey, we're rock and rollers all of a sudden. And, uh, and, uh, but they never forgot their roots. And, of course, Elvis and Jerry Lee Lewis and Carl Perkins, all those, all those guys uh, still recorded country music. You know? and, uh, and in those days, the Top 40, when the Top 40 started on, on uh, Radio 2 UE in, in Sydney, you, had, you might have... Uh, like, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. Number one, this week. Next week, it would probably be a white sports coat and a pink carnation. A country song. So, you know, there's always been that, that crossover thing between rock and roll and country. And, uh, and I was lucky because Mike Walsh recognised that in me. And uh, because I had the, the uncanny knack of being able to hear th songs on the radio in those, in those days and sit down at the piano and play them. And uh, so while she offered me a little bit of a spot there and it lasted for about uh, 14 and a half, 15 years. And here we are still after all those years and it's great. Yeah, that is great. Wow. And you are, you're one of the greatest artists here this weekend. When did your music career start? Oh God. I was a 14 year old kid. I was a 14 year old kid in a, in a, in a pub in Sydney called the Alawa Hotel, for those of you know where, where that is, and, um, and there happened to be a talent quest on Saturday afternoon, and I was with my bodgy and with then bodgy and widgy mates. Uh, <laughs> for those who don't know what a bodgy and widgy is, look it up on the internet. Google it. Sure, we'll do that. <laughs> and, uh, and I was with my bodgy and widgy mates, and, um, and they put my, and we're all drinking schooners of beer, and I was as drunk as a scum, 14 years of age. And drunk, because in those days there was no drugs, there was what, no pot, no ice, no, no nothing, no heroin, all that, all these dreadful things which are killing the world right now. Uh, all you had was a, a dirty old packet of Ardeth or Capstan cigarettes, and and 
more beer. <laughs> so I was drinking schooners of beer, and a schooner of beer is like, oh, I like drinking a pint, I like drinking a keg. And I was plastered. At 14 years old. At 14 old. years of age. Shouldn't have been in there because in those days you had to be 21 years of age or over to be on licensed premises. I shouldn't have even been there. Neither should all my bodgy and widgy mates, but we were there. You were a rebel. <laughs> we, were re we were having a great time. There was a talent quest on starting at 3 o'clock and all my mates sended my name in the talent quest because I could play all the, the, the hit songs of the, of the day as such. And Anyway, the, uh, the comp here yelled out after about three or four contestants had already been on there. Ladies and gentlemen, the next contestant is Johnny Hurley, because John being my real name then. And all my podgy and witchy mates chucked me up on the stage. Old upright piano there, and I pulled the front out of it, and I jumped, I jumped all over it and kicked the keys and did all of that, and I, and I sang a whole lot of shaking going on. Come on over, baby. A whole lot of... Which we might do tonight, too. I don't know. And uh, would you believe I won the talent quest? And you know what the first prize was? No. Nope. This is going... The, the, because you're too young, right? <laughs> The, the first prize was a brand new 10 shilling note, which is equivalent to 50 cents now, as we know it. Wow, that's strange. Yeah. And another schooner of beer, which I needed like a hole in the head. But uh, I was very lucky because driving past the pub and called into the, into the hotel to have a, have a drink with a, a couple of members of his band was the great then Johnny O'Keefe. Now, Johnny O'Keefe was the king of rock and roll in Australia. And... Um, and, uh, and they referred to him as the wire one. And he'd been doing his show at Wollongong, south of Sydney, the night before, just happened to call into the hotel, saw this drunk kid up on stage singing, come on over, baby, a whole lot of shaking going on and all that sort of thing, winning the talent quest. And the very next Saturday night, the biggest uh, rock and roll television show then was Six O'Clock Rock on the ABC, long before Countdown and Bandstand, all of those sorts of things. And uh, anyway, so... Um, Next Saturday night, he put me on six o'clock rock, and um, here we are all these years later, still doing it. John's died now. Johnny O'Keefe, he died a long time ago, and a lot of the a lot of the people, uh, even in his band, uh, they're not with us anymore. And, uh, but there again, I was only a fourteen-year-old kid in those days, and uh, so I started pretty young, and here we are. That's amazing! Wow, and um, so you've. If two were some of the biggest artists in the world, such as Johnny Cash yeah. and June Carter Cash, how was that? You know, it's it's amazing to uh, to be uh, to be able to work, travel the, the world, and work with some of the greats. I, I toured with uh, Don Williams in, in America, and uh, Johnny Cash and June Carter Cash in Ireland and Europe and London. And um, my manager rang me up and said, "I got you a couple of new gigs in, in Ireland." And I thought he's talking about <laughs> an island off the Whit Sundays. No, over there near England. And I said, who, who, who's booked me for those? And he said, there's a couple in, a, in Nashville, Tennessee. And at that time, I was appearing on a television show recorded in Christchurch, New Zealand, called That's Country. And uh, it was shown to 19 million people twice a week in, on the cable television in, in, uh, in America. And, uh, and I said, who, what do you mean a couple sit in the lounge room and waits for Jade Hurley to come on television in America? And he said, well, it's Johnny Cash and his wife, June Carter Cash. I said, what? And the long and the short of it was, just, yeah. He, uh, he, because you've got to remember, going back to the history of Jerry Lee Lewis and Carl Perkins and Elvis Presley and, and, uh, uh, and Johnny Cash uh, and Roy Orbison, recording in the, in the Sam Phillips studio in Memphis, Tennessee. And they all, all these greats recorded, uh, and I think most of them are gone now. Jerry Lee Lewis is still alive. Still alive. Um, and, uh, and, and Johnny Cash compared me to Jerry Lee Lewis. And I don't play the piano anything like Jerry Lee Lewis. I don't sit at the piano like Jerry Lee. I don't sing like him. I don't play the piano like him. He's got his style and I've got my style. And that's the thing that attracted Johnny Cash. He said, he said, you, you know, he said you're nothing like Jerry Lee, but you, you basically do the same thing and, uh, and you... You've got Australia in your in the palm of your hands doing what you do, and I said, "Well, that's that's a lovely way to describe it." But it was wonderful to to perform. One of the greatest things that ever happened to me in my life was opening the show, or I should say, closing the first half of the Johnny Cash show in at the Cork Opera House in Ireland. And I walked out there, and I, ironically enough, my first song was a whole lot of shaking on a Jerry Lee Lewis song. 
and I got halfway through that and something out, caught, caught me out of the corner of my eye and I looked over and there's Johnny Cash sitting on a stool with June behind him with her hands on his shoulders and just looking at me work. And they did that every show. They were there at the side of the stage every show. And I said, when we got to London, I said to him, look, you, were, you know, you were standing on the side of the stage every show. And he said, well, he said, I've never, ever seen anyone perform quite like you do. And he gave me the, uh, the loveliest comment. He said, uh, and he said, you're the hardest act to follow that, I, that I've ever worked with. And, he, and that was printed in the Cork, um, in the Cork uh, newspaper, and which was a lovely, a lovely compliment. You know, and he's gone now, and June's gone, and there you go. That's life. So amazing. Yeah. What's um, what was your favourite venue that you've performed at? Oh, golly! I mean, it's, there's been so many uh, down through the years. Uh, yeah. Oh, gee, a couple that I recall, uh, 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 worked out in in in, uh, in America. Uh, look, the Opera House in, in in Cork is memorable for for the reason that. They, they, that's where I worked with Johnny Cash, uh, and seeing him sit on the stool, the, as I said, on the side of the stage, nothing really tops that, I suppose, and that that's a hard act to follow, and uh, and uh, for that to be in in my in my memory bank for the rest of my life is something that I'm really proud of. That's special. Yeah. Wow. So um, you, you're a hectic piano player. Is there any more instruments you play? I play pretty well anything. I play guitar and bass and drums and, and then a few other things. I've got my own recording studio and new album ready to go, but I suppose that's for another time, isn't it? I guess so. <laughs> wow. And um, have you got any advice for aspiring artists? Oh, look, it's hard. It's, it's tough now. The internet age... Uh, while, the, while the internet age makes it tougher because uh, people can download you, load your songs, download them... For you know, through iTunes, you pay to download them, but they can also, if they're smart enough, go to somewhere on the web and download them for nothing. And, uh, but that comes with a few benefits as well, because down through the years, there's been nothing worse, to my way of thinking, uh, going and paying, say, 25 or 20 or 30 or uh, 30 to 30 dollars for a CD, and there's only two good songs on it. The rest of them are junk. And man, I've always been a critic of that. So. Every every product, every CD or album down through the years that I have, I have recorded, every track has got to be a, a great track. Otherwise, forget the whole thing. Um, you know. So, if, but if you want to go to iTunes now, you just download the song that you want off that album, and that's it. Couple of bob, couple of dollars, or whatever. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's so true. And have you had any crazy fans? Like any, any incident that, ha that has <laughs> happened with a crazy fan? <laughs> Oh, you get the odd pair of knickers thrown, don't you? <laughs> Still to this day, I shouldn't say that in front of you, but anyway, but uh, <laughs> no, and these days they throw gorgeous gussies. But anyway, no, <laughs> and you've got to be over forty or fifty to know what gorgeous gussies are. But anyway, no, it's it's. Look, the fans are terrific. For for me to still be here at, at this stage of my life, and you know the fans are out there, and man, you know I'll see Running Bear and Great Balls of Fire and all those great old songs and everything like that, and and they they ask for more. Who can ask for any more anything more than that? Yeah, yeah. they just adore you. It's so good. I can't wait to see you too when you perform. And um, have you got any albums coming out at all yeah, recently? Got a brand new, got a brand new album ready to go. Uh, at this stage, with 18 songs on it, 18 tracks on it, which is a lot, because the average uh, average CD is really only probably 12 or 13, and um, and uh, yeah, the Sony Music in Australia have got that album right now, and we're just waiting to hear if they are going to dis distribute it. So, uh, hopefully, God willing, uh, someone at Sony says, "Yeah, this is a good album. We're going to release it." Yeah, please. <laughs> Well, congratulations on that. And thank you so much for your time. It's been a privilege. Nice to talk to you always, Jasmine. Oh, no worries. You're watching AICM TV.